You can be seated for a little moment. Do you know, I was just thinking about this as I just prepared this morning for this moment. Great homes are not made by chance. Great homes are made by a choice. They really are. And what we have seen this morning is a great, wonderful, generous home. A home where people have made a choice. Not just one choice, but maybe hundreds, if not thousands, of choices. Positive choices. Choices of commitment. Choices to remain faithful. Choices to just keep going when you want to give up. We all have a life outside of our involvement here within this church. We all have challenges and sometimes difficulties that we go through. However, there's an unrelenting choice that's awakened within us as a result of the Holy Spirit living inside us. And it's His help, it's His power, it's His presence that enables us to continue making those choices that matter to God. And I believe that God is pleased with that kind of faithfulness. I believe that it pleases the heart of God that we just keep turning up and being faithful and offering an encouraging word to somebody that may be struggling, even though we're struggling ourselves. Offering a kind act, just keeping on being committed to the things that God has called us to do and to be. Great homes are not just made by chance. Great homes, great churches, great places like this are made not by the choice of one, two, three, or four, but by the choices of hundreds of people. And I believe today that we can be confident. I believe today that we can be pleased with, the, with our commitment and with the work that we've done over this last past year. I don't believe that it's wrong to look back on all of the things that have been accomplished and say, wow, what a great work. I don't believe, I believe it's right to take a day like this and to take our time and to take a moment like this to see all of the wonderful aspects of church life. It really is. It encourages us to go forward, to continue with a with a great heart and a great spirit and a great attitude to continue in the work in which God has called us. You don't become a blessing to others by chance. You become a blessing to others by a choice that you make. You don't give as a result of chance and hapstance and coincidence. No, you give by intention by determination, by a strong resolve. And we've seen that today. Proverbs 11, 24 says this, there is one who scatters yet increases more. There is one who gives yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. I've chosen that verse for this simple reason because I want you to understand that we have not withheld anything. We have not withheld our commitment and our kindness and our love and our faithfulness to this city. I believe that we've seen that we've been honorable in our stewardship in our service to what God has called us to do. You look at the prison ministries, over 20 years of service, traveling out to prisons all over the land. Are there times where Dave Escott and uh, Dave and Stella and the other guys want to come into this place and just want to have a rest from the work that they've been called to? Are there times where they just want to, you know, relax here and just take in and be ministered to and not go to prison? Of course there is. But there's an unrelenting resolve 
within them. There's a commitment within their spirit. There's a drive as a result of the life of Jesus inside them that causes them to scatter, to scatter, to give life wherever they go, to bring generosity and, and their gifts into the needs of, of the prisons that they go into. And as a result, I guarantee you could go up to Dave Escott, you could go up to Dave and Stella Saunders, and you could ask them this question. As you've scattered, have you increased? I guarantee, I've, I've spoken to Dave Escott and Dave and Stella Saunders about this various times. I guarantee you, they would tell you, do you know what? We have scattered, we have sown, we have been committed and generous with our, with our time and our talents. And as a result, we've increased. You see, when you give, your life doesn't get depleted. It doesn't diminish. The world tells us that, you know, you've got to, with, you've got to hold on to what you got, man. You've got to hold on to every little bit and retain it. But the kingdom is very different. Jesus said it's better to give than to receive because when you give you don't deplete your resources you increase it's it's a strange phenomenon it's spiritual and it's of God no we haven't withheld our care Tony and the team going out giving freely receiving people receiving as a result of that team going out you look at Jesus cares and we haven't withheld we you know, one of, our, one of our objectives in Jesus Cares is to fill our warehouse. And as soon as it's filled, everybody's on a mission, friends, to empty that place. As soon as the stuff comes in, it gets labeled, it gets boxed, and it's ready to go. It goes out as soon as it comes in. And that's one of the things that, that has been a hallmark of Jesus cares as we you know take people around from agencies and we're working with over over well over 200 social care agencies all of the top players that work in this land we are working with as a church here in Lower Dock Street you are having an influence you are reaching beyond your border beyond your boundary working with many many social care agencies and we tell them as they come in, we say, listen, our, we have one objective in this place. Because they hear about the Arctic lorries coming early in the mornings. And they hear about the other warehouses that we have access to. And I say, listen, we, we, we get it in here. It lands here. And then it's got to get out into cupboards that are empty. What if we had a withholding spirit in this place? There would be poverty in the prisons, I tell you. If we had a withholding spirit in this place, there would be poverty, more poverty on, on the streets of Pill if Tony hadn't have got up and listened to the call of God and got a team around him and gone out there and ministered to, 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 to people. If, we, if we'd have had a withholding spirit, well, do you know what? We've got to try and retain as much food as we can and, and keep it to ourselves and give a little bit out here and give a little bit out there. No, let's get this stuff out. Let's get it out as soon as it comes in. Let's get it out of the door into the cupboards that are empty. And you know what? As we have scattered, I'm telling you, it's supernatural. As we have scattered food and resources and provisions all over this land and all over this city, the incredible thing is our resources have never once been depleted, friends. Never once there has been increase after increase after increase. I remember Faye and I sitting once on the sofa at home and we looked at each other and we'd run out of 25,000 boxes. When we first got the 25,000 boxes, we thought we were on a winner, that we're never going to run out of them. After six months, we'd run drier boxes and we looked at each other and we thought, my God, what are we going to do? We got no boxes. And we looked up heavenward and said, Jesus, do you know what? This isn't sustained by us. Over to you, Jesus. It actually says on the label, Jesus cares. So it doesn't say Dave cares or Faye cares. Even though we do, it says Jesus cares. Over to you. Within the week, we'd run dry at 25,000 boxes. We'd scattered 
25,000 boxes we hadn't withheld, we'd scattered. Within the week, I had gained access to 150,000 boxes. I'm telling you now, every door was shut in and then God opened the big one and gave me a connection with a world leader. I've been amazed at where my feet have gone as a result of being planted into this house. I've been amazed at the people that I've met, the privilege that I've had. The privilege that I've had as a person, I've sat in director's office, I've sat with multi-millionaires, I've gone into, into, into big, huge manufacturing plants, I've gone to food distributors, manufacturers and main players within the industry. I've been, I've been amazed at where my feet have gone as a result of just scattering, not withholding, but having a generous, generous spirit. No, we haven't withheld anything. We haven't withheld the history. You look back at the history of this church. One of the, one of the main pillars of this church when, when Pastor Ray founded this church was to have a heart for ministries that are going into other nations. You look at the, the, the hundreds of thousands of pounds that have been collected in this place and sent out, sent out to other lands. We, if, if we listed them all, we could have a big long list here over the last 27, 28 years. It's been wonderful. It's been a generous place. It's been a generous house. It hasn't been a house that's withheld. No, it's been a house that's scattered abroad and increased as a result of it. We haven't withheld anything. You look at our heart for the house. And again, there's a, there's a generous, a generous spirit in it all. Not a withholding spirit. Not a diminishing spirit, but an advancing spirit. Because that's what happens when we give. We advance. We go forward. Our life is enriched and enlarged. We're going to prepare to give right now. And in a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity for you to come forward and bring your gift to God today. For this next year, for this house and this offering is going to focus on the three areas that are at the heart of our church. A heart for this city and beyond this city. A heart for the nations of the world in which we're in touch with. And also a heart for this house. I was thinking when I was preparing this about the little lad that turned up at the Jesus crusade one day in a field. And he had a little lunch. And Jesus was ministering and the disciples, they were getting a bit tired, a bit weary. They'd given a lot. And they just went up to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, it's about time you send everybody home. But Jesus could see beyond that withholding spirit that the disciples had. Jesus could see that there was a need amongst the multitudes. And if he'd have sent them away without feeding them, Many of them would have fallen faint because they'd been listening to him for three days. And Jesus looked at that moment as a great opportunity. I wonder what had happened, what would have happened that day if the little lad would have withheld his lunch. No, he didn't withhold it. That little lad didn't withhold what he had in his hand. He put it in the hands of Jesus. And Jesus didn't withhold himself from that need. He blessed it, he broke it, and he distributed it. And it's amazing how something so small and something so insignificant in the hands of God could feed such a wonderful, great multitude that day. I believe that that's a testimony of this church. We've brought what we can bring, and then Jesus touches it and blesses it and distributes it and it becomes far more than what it is because of his blessing on it. Amen. Had a great day today. You're blessed. Fantastic. Great.